General advice for PPE is take your time because what you're doing will take longer. Keep your hands away from your face, very important. Clean, change the gloves if they get torn or contaminated. Limit the surfaces you touch. Try and think carefully about what you're doing and plan what you're doing rather than doing what you're normally doing. Just go and do that, but then think, oh, I need to do that, and oh, I need to do that. So, you know, take your time and think, this is what I'm going to do on this visit. Uh, and then clean your hands after the gloves come off, but I'll come through doffing, I'll go through doffing in a minute. Before you put it all on, remember, keep yourself hydrated, because if you're gonna be wearing PPE for a while, like in intensive care, you may be wearing it for an hour or two, then you may become hot or uncomfortable and you can't get a drink. So it's really important to look after yourself, obviously tie your hair back, get the jewelry out, check your PPEs the correct size before you put it on. The worst thing to do is get togged up and then find out you haven't got gloves the right size, so that's not good. So, um, I'll go through putting on the PP for aerosol generating procedures, but the principle is exactly the same and the order is pretty much the same. Well, it is exactly the same for the, just the surgical mask, apron and gloves. So hand hygiene first, then put on the long sleeve fluid repellent gown and fasten the necktie and the waist ties and then the respirator goes on, okay? And it has to be one you're fit tested to use. And at the moment, we've got three or four different types kicking around because suppliers will send us what they have. So they will substitute. We might think we're getting the 3M, but we get the Cardinal <laughs> Health one. So they are better at substituting than Tesco's because if you order a cauliflower at Tesco's, you get nappies instead because uh, they haven't got the right thing. But they, you, you do get an FFP3 mask. Okay. What I would say is if you're mobile and like a crash team and you're likely to have to go to another area, take a mask with you that you know is, you're being fit tested for because when you get there, you might find they haven't got stock of that and they've got a different one. So that's useful. And if you've got to use goggles or safety specs, make sure they're compatible with the mask uh, that you're using. So to check the respirator, you put, you put it on, upper straps go over the crown of the head, over the ears, the lower strap goes around the nape of the neck, and then you make sure it's flat against your cheeks. And you use both hands and press this around your nose to get a good seal, because getting a good seal is absolutely crucial. You would have been fit tested. You then do a fit check. And that will vary depending on the type of mask, but most commonly it's things like doing a good suck in. And if you feel the mask come in, you know you've got a seal because otherwise it would leak around. If you've got a good suck coming in, you know the air is going through the filter. If it's leaking around the outside, then it's not working and you do not proceed because not all masks fit everybody. You know, different, you know, we all have different shaped faces. Yeah. Now, there have been some concern, understandable, when people get a mask out and it says expiry date is January 2020. The reason for this is that uh, there is a huge stockpile for this sort of scenario because you can't go to 3M who are knocking out 5,000 masks a day because they they you know, they, these aren't in millions of regular use and then say, oh yeah, can you go from 5,000 a day to 2 million a day? They can't do that quickly, so you have the stockpile to get people over the, the, you know, the, the time where the production is accelerating. And we have a stockpile, and it, it's been there a while, obviously, but the dates actually relate to what the manufacturer has tested it to. And let me explain what that means. So on this mask here, for example, we've got a non-woven material of a couple of different layers here. We've got a plastic piece on the front. We've got a paper filter in there, which is the HEPA filter, and then we have stretchy straps here and a seal here. Now when you look at that, the non-woven is probably not going to deteriorate, the metal isn't, the paper won't, the plastic may, but it, only if it's exposed to UV light, so if you stored that in a box it's probably okay. But the, this rubber here and this probably will, as you know if you've had scrunchies and that sort of stuff, it will go stretchy after a period of time. So what a manufacturer does is when they produce something like that, they think, okay, how long can you safely say that that will be okay without deteriorating it? And they put it in a special room with huge humidity and huge temperature and sometimes with UV light to see what the deterioration is like and they leave it there for about two months. And that simulates two years, five years of exposure in poor storage conditions. And then they can say, okay, it survived two months at those extreme conditions, therefore, under normal conditions, it's gonna be all right for at least five years, but they'll put a five-year expiry date on it, okay? So what we've got is, and so you'll see some of them, they, if they might even have a little sticker over the expiry date with a new expiry date. Rumor went round that somebody just putting a sticker on to get us to use them, right? This, we are not flogging dodgy meat from a supermarket that somebody stuck a new badge on and is flogging down the market. This is the NHS. So what's happened is they will have tested these masks. They'll have taken some from the batches, gone back to the manufacturer, tested and looked at and they said they're safe to use. And in fact, in some cases, the manufacturers have even stuck them in one of these machines for a week and that's simulated a year's worth. So that's why you've got a new date on it. 
Okay, not all manufacturers have been able to do that, but they will have been tested. Okay, but for any mask, have a look at it and say, is there any visible deterioration? And you will know when you fit checked if it's working or not. And if, if it's not working, you don't use it. And if you find one that's dropping apart, please let us know. NHS did actually put out some guidance, which wasn't hugely well publicised, but it says some products may appear, appear to be out of date, used by, have relabeled. Please assure products we are issuing have been passed stringent tests to demonstrate they're safe. It's exposed to extreme conditions for prolonged periods. Any that are not up to standard are destroyed and that are not distributed to trusts. So please don't worry about that. If it's, if it's arrived, it's OK. Putting the PPE on, eye protection then, uh, you know, you've got the gown, uh, gown and respirator on. Gloves, make sure you've got the right size and then make sure you've got the, uh, the end of the glove over the cuff. Then you're good to go. If you're not familiar, get a, a colleague to check you. More important is the doffing, okay, and that's where people have problems. And that's where things like Ebola cause problems because people were coming out of areas if they were working for an hour in horrendous conditions in huge heat and humidity, wearing all the PPE, and they were not cognitively working very well at that time and they made mistakes while they were taking the PPE off. Like they take their mask or the eye protection off and just rub their eye. And that's how they would get things like Ebola. So, you know, we're not at that stage. It's not that sort of infection, but you do need to take your time. So obviously if you're working in there and your mask gets damaged, you change it at that point anyway. But normally you would remove PPE in this order. Gloves off first, then the apron, then the masks and eye protection. I'll go through that in the stages. So the gloves, the outside of the glove is contaminated, so try and lift the edge and then peel it back. Don't put your hand inside to push it off because your contaminated hand will then go inside and contaminate this hand. Okay, when you've got the gloves off, you clean your hands with alcohol gel. Then you are safe to remove the apron because you, you know, if you haven't cleaned your hands, then your contaminated potentially hands, you're going to start contaminating around the back of your neck. So you you've got your hands clean with gel. You then the, the, it's the front and the arms of the gowns that are going to be contaminated. You just undo it at the top and the back, and then take it down and let it roll down over your arms. Fold it up from the inside, and then dispose of it, and then clean your hands again with the alcohol hand rub. Then the eye protection goes off. The outside will be the most contaminated. Then the respirator comes off. Okay, hand alcohol hand rub between the two, and at the end of it all, you wash your hands with soap and water. Okay, and th th that's good to go. Just get into the habit of doing this. It's the gloves, apron, eye protection, mask, lots of hand hygiene between, the, uh, and then alcohol, uh, then soap and water at the end of it. Duration of mask wear. You wear a surgical mask till it becomes moist or what you're doing is, is over. Do not drop it down for a while, wear it around your neck like a fashion accessory and put it back up again. You see plenty of people doing that. And then when they put it back up, they'll have to push it down around their nose again and their hand's going near their eye and they will have contaminated it. That's not good. FFP3 you get rid of after the aerosol generating procedure or if it's become contaminated or after the, at, the, at the end of the care episode. Okay. But you can wear those for one care episode for a couple of hours, but it'll become quite uncomfortable after a while and you get marks around you, but they, they will be, they'll be fine for a couple of hours and you, you hopefully be relieved within that time anyway. Again, though, you don't drop those down and reapply, you will not get a good fit again. Okay. And that you could get false assurance.